Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Stone Ocean episode number 3. Okay, the previous episode, um, we met a new character. Her name was Gwes and a new stand which was called Goo Goo Dolls. Um, it was a very fairly simple enough stand. She just can uh, make other people shrink. And she tried to use that on Jolene to, you know, kind of blackmail her in a way to go and um, you know, break out, help her break out. But in the end, Jolene was able to um, outwit her and you know like seeing like you know like at that time it was the first time that jolene's uh, stand manifested and now she can properly fight using it and she can use a lot of other tricks using her, the special property that her stand has which is like you know untangling into a mush of strings so she can go through some you know tight spots and she can pass through some like you know like from narrow spots and stuff and she can do a lot of things with that she can even like you know dodge attacks by you know untangling it and doing stuff like that and it's really unique and i'm really looking forward to how she's going to use this and since jolene is obviously one from the joestar family i'm sure she will come up with some stuff which i i probably won't even imagine you know just like how jotaro not jotaro i think um uh, this like you know innovative ways of actually fighting this was done uh way more by um josuke like josuke had a lot of i don't know what like you know like like a talent to actually uh like you know change stuff and make it like you know make some weird things happen using the quality like you know the using the properties of his uh stand uh, for example, you know, like the first uh, in the first episode of uh, part four, he basically punches his mom, you know, and <laughs> uses the broken bottle to grab that stand and take it out. Like these like innovative ways of using his power that I think Josuke probably did that the best. And um, John also kind of used that, you know, like used like a, quite a few innovative ways of uh, fighting. Uh, I'm sure Jolene will also probably do that and I'm kind of looking forward to that because obviously she's a Joe star So I'm sure she can do stuff like that. She she has the brain for it and the intelligence for it So yeah, anyways, um, let's get started. This is episode number three. So yeah, without further ado uh, Let's start this video. So I'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here Think it whichever uh, is your preference and let's start All right, so here's the countdown three two one, go. Okay, let's see what what this episode brings. Hmm. All right. Okay, the opening. Wow, the opening was um fantastic. Like I love this. Okay, that's Gwes. I under I can s I understand who that is now. You know, sitting in the in the prison cell. Okay, these characters we still not met. And this girl as well, who's probably be one of the main crew. Yeah, okay. And there's Jotaro. I can see that the the other girl I'm not talking about uh, Hermes uh, the other girl has a gun with her and will she like be like Mista like you know the whole thing with the gun that she Mista did 
probably something related to the gun her stand will be i don't know we'll see because how else will she get a gun inside a prison you know <laughs> like more, most probably that's related to her stand so we'll see the visitor oh will jotaro come becomes less powerful oh okay two meters all right interesting you can do long range stuff and short range stuff as well hmm. whoa stone inside that hmm yeah Um. Okay. I doubt she'll play it back, but still, you know, like you can. Oh my God! Wow. Yeah. Um. Huh, wow. <laughs> okay, so yeah, she wants money. Oh god. Mom. Oh great. <laughs> I love how she says Yakamashi just like her dad. <laughs> Warning. Oh no. Oh no, is this something related to a stand? Um... Oh. Why? what oh i understand now what he's trying to say okay oh my god okay i understand yeah everyone will come to her and be like give me money Yeah. Yeah, just go and ask her. Yeah. Okay, I was not thinking of it in that way. And then I, I, Guess is right, I guess. Um, give me my money. Um, n no. Uh, um, here we go again. Okay. Um, so where's my money? Oh, wow. <laughs> Uh, 
Okay, so let's see what Jillian will do now. Oh no, she's going to smack her with the globe or something. Oh, never mind. I thought she was going to pick up the globe. <laughs> Whoa, what? Wait. Oh my god. My god, Jolene is crazy. <laughs> Money, please. How much will you pay? A hundred dollars? <laughs> nice. There you go. Nice. Oh my god. <laughs> well, there you go. That's the sign of don't mess with me, you know. Oh. Yeah. Wait, how did she also get it? Did she also drink the... Hmm. Um... Okay... Oh, wow. What, what's uh, baseball? What the? What is? Okay, no one saw that? Um, okay. Oh my god! God damn! Ugh. What is wrong with... Well, this is a prison, so I guess... Like, anything goes. Ugh. Wait, who's this? Oh, it's an al albino? Or maybe he can't see. Um, ooh. Okay. Okay, another Oh, great. Yeah. Oh, the visitor, I guess. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. A few things are happening. Number one, the kid, that guy, the, the white-haired guy, those two are somehow related to this. And the visitor, I'm guessing, is it Jotaro?
what it's most probably jotaro whoa what's happening oh Oh my god! Oh yeah, the camera, oh my god. Okay, maybe it's not Jotaro. Otherwise, why is this kid uh, warning her so much? Whoa! Don't throw it away. He gave it for a reason. I'm sure of it. Okay, there you go. Okay, it is Jotaro. So why was he warning him, her so much? Oh, wow, look at him. Oh, well, I threw it away. <laughs> well, Jyotaro looks a little bit different. I guess, you know, age. Oh, this is a mom. Um, that's not so at all. Wow, she has a star tattoo. Oh! <laughs> well, he's he's unconscious. You knocked him out. <laughs> okay. What? Oh, so he's not an albino, he's just cataract. Oh. Wait, so what about... Uh... Wait, so what was that scene about? The, the guy, Romeo... I think that was his name? Probably because of Jotaro? Like... My god. <laughs> Probably related to Jotaro, that's why. Oh no! Okay, there you go, because of... Hmm... Crutch. Wait, do we know Jong?
pawn of his enemy oh oh okay so he was one of duo's people <laughs> well um yeah Hmm. Oh. Oh. <coughs> Whoa. Oh no, did he use his? Oh yeah, his power. No, wait, no, not. I thought he used the word. Oh no. Oh no! Yeah, and take out the bullet. I don't even know if that's a bullet. What is that? It is a bullet. Okay. Oh, nice. The stand protected her. Okay. Oh. Okay. Nah, he probably has a stand. Oh. That's true. Probably his stand power. Stand power. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Change in the air. Air current? Oh. Huh. Oh no. Um he woke up. Oops. Um, smack him again. Oh no! Sound? Yeah, not great. No, otherwise. Oh, God. 
Oh my god! Oh my god, this is a problem. Wait, what happened? Okay, um... The thing... The actual thing that will be a problem here is the guy's dead now. So, what will you even... Like, you know, like... The police force will be on top of them now. Like, how do you even get out of this situation? Like, obviously they won't believe that this was some other stand power. They'll obviously think it's either Jotaro or Jolene who shot him. So, what now? <coughs> okay, um... The guy, um, I think his name was Romeo. The, uh, the guy, um... Uh, who we thought was the one who so wait so he was not related to this so why was he talking with the lawyer then oh wait a minute just a sec um I need to check something. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Okay, one thing I, I need to check. Like, um, according to this uh, episode, according to this episode, um, Jotaro said that it's not a uh, Romeo's fault. It's someone else's fault. But we clearly saw in that episode um, you know, in the last part that uh, the guy was actually talking with uh, the lawyer and his, uh, the lawyer said something like, oh, you don't have to worry about anything, you know, uh, everything will be fine or something like that. But so, so then if, if it was not his fault, if he did not frame Jolene, excuse me, so like then why did that, like, then what was that scene about? Okay, here we go. Um, I, I have gone back to episode one in the last scene. Okay, um, the lawyer comes out of the place. Where you go? Yeah, he comes out. Uh, he says uh, there won't be any further investigations. Congratulations, Romeo. Romeo's like, thank you. You saved my life. <clears throat> Just a sec. Oh my god, it's lagging. Okay, no, he clearly says here. Yeah, he says that you don't need to worry. Uh, the sentence has been finalized. She agreed to the plea deal. She won't be able to appeal. Uh, congratulations, Romeo. He's like, thank you, you saved me. Uh. You should thank your um, rich dad for this. Okay, so yeah, he is related to this. So then what? I, f I Like I went back to this episode to check whether did I like, you know, misunderstand something or like is something else was happening. But no, he, he clearly says in front of Romeo that Jolene won't be able to come back from this whole mess. He's in for she's in for good and Romeo is like thank you for that and <coughs> the lawyer is like oh thank your dad for that because he has money all those stuff so so what does so Jotaro says that he, now I can understand if this like you know the whole situation was obviously not orchestrated by Romeo it was someone else that I understand but obviously some part of the fault lies with Romeo because it was he who you know made it seem as if like you know like Jolene was fully responsible for that so obviously that part of the blame still lies with him so it's just that he he was not the actual <coughs> person behind the whole thing <coughs> the whole thing was actually 
someone else was behind this guy uh this um the guy we see here i forgot his name um the white-haired guy he was behind the whole murder that happened but other than that the other stuff is his fault romeo's fault a little bit but okay anyways um so yeah here in this episode um <clears throat> we see um the whole thing with lending money is kind of it comes to light here where um Gwes tells uh, jolene that don't uh, lend money here especially in the prison and if you do that be sure to take back the money that you lent now in the beginning i was really unable to understand i was first of all the thing that i was thinking i was thinking like maybe she also is like a standability user and maybe it's uh, like you know something related to lending money you know her stand is maybe related to lending money or something so i was thinking something like that i was thinking that's why gwen was saying don't lend uh, the girl money but then she was like no that's not the thing here you should not lend money and you should take it back for a moment i really wasn't able to understand i was like wait it's like one dollar you're talking about even if the girl does not give the money back like how much will it even hurt you know like it's one if, if it was like uh you kind know, of some hundred dollars or like ten dollars uh ten or a hundred dollars then i would be able to understand i would be like yeah that's quite a bit of money but like you know since it was one dollar i was like yeah even if it goes away it's like you know like i guess nothing will happen no like it's not life-threatening or something but then I realized what he, she was actually implying by that. She was saying that this is not because of the money or because like, you know, like it's not because of that. It's because of the mentality everyone will take. Everyone will think uh, of you to be the person who they can, you know, uh, bully. And this whole, like, you know, mob mentality of bullying you will start to manifest in each and every people who are here. And they'll start, you know, like harassing you, messing with you, taking money from you, do all the other stuff, you know, start bullying you. And that's the thing she was actually talking about. She was talking about the way people will see her. You know, they'll see, they'll, they'll think like, oh, like Jolene, she's just a convenient, uh, you know, money box. You, just, you can just go to her and ask for money and she'll give it. Otherwise, we can just, you know, beat her up and she'll give money. This thing will kind of everyone will start thinking in this way and <clears throat> and yeah she was right in the end like you know that guy that girl was like uh, shut up i'll pay you back uh, but uh yeah like if you want you can pay me some extra money ten dollars so that i can you know call my friends and they'll help <laughs> they'll help you return the money like <laughs> julian just goes away and <laughs> um that was the little dust that she um poured in into the cup it was um powdered uh the metal the i'm i'm not sure what the money is which metal the money is made from the coin but whichever metal it is made from powdered uh she powdered that and using the string she <laughs> that was that was smart she she mixed it into the uh, drink that she was drinking now we kind of saw before like she has gotten a lot of strength now you can using her stand she can crush any uh you know little coin she doesn't have much strength but she can do stuff like that so that's why she was able to <clears throat> make the money in powder form you know like crush it into powder and just um mix it into the thing that she was drinking and obviously that's a metal like you know powderized metal she was drinking <laughs> obviously it's going to mess with the stomach and yeah um <laughs> jolene was like give me money if you want to get in and she was like yeah okay i'll give you ten dollar like i don't know if it was like you know <laughs> i would have asked for a hundred dollar but i guess uh like you know like it's kind of impossible for uh inmates to bring a hundred dollar in that'll be a little bit too much i guess so yeah i think ten dollar was good enough <laughs> like the main thing here was not money the main thing here was that yeah you won't be able to push me around like that 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 was something that you like jolene wanted to let all the others know so the money was not a factor the factor was yes yeah look at this i was able to take money back from her and take a little bit more from her 
and yeah she was really like easily able to show that to each and every person there and the girl who was getting bullied <coughs> jolin told her that yeah you also go and <laughs> you know take advantage because another person will come <coughs> now here's the thing mm, i think the advice that she gave that girl was good obviously you know you should not let anyone push you around but the thing here is that girl doesn't have any stand ability she she is like uh, you know like she's like she seems meek and um very quiet and that type of a person so and she is already being bullied like you know she's in the process of being bullied bullied so if she suddenly starts to rebel i feel like the you know like the backlash will be a bit more than jolin because jolin is not was not being bullied she was in the process of getting bullied she stopped that before like you know the bullying started she stopped that she nipped the bud in its uh, like you know while it was growing that's a completely different thing to what was happening to that girl that girl is in, was in the process of being bullied she has already been bullied quite a few times so i think her actually trying to rebel against that you know with her type of personality and with her having no stand i don't know i feel like that would actually you know like that would actually backfire so i'm not sure if the way jolene told her to do would work <clears throat> obviously she needs to start you know <clears throat> standing up for herself but not like that i feel like if she actually went to the toilet and just asked them for money I think it would have come to bite her in the uh, bite her in the back later on like you know like people like you know maybe maybe at that time the person who tried to get into the toilet would give her the money and go into the toilet do her job you know and come out but later on i'm i'm sure they would probably gang up with some friends and come and beat her up like i don't know this is just something that i feel i feel like that uh, advice that jolene gave her at that moment would probably backfire if she had some kind of stand it, it, it wouldn't have been a problem but with her like you know meek personality and with her having no stand that was a i, I don't think that was a good advice <clears throat> but yeah anyways well like that's not the point here <laughs> so yeah anyways that was that and <clears throat> now here we meet another <clears throat> a little kid with a baseball uh you know wearing a baseball cap and everything baseball or uniform and a ball baseball he tells jolene to not go into the visitor room next day if someone comes to visit her now i was thinking like why was like i was i was quite sure it was jotaro obviously like who else would it even be like so i was thinking why was he not letting telling her not to meet jotaro now i realized that that's probably not what she, he was meaning <coughs> he was warning her because of not not because of jotaro but because of the thing that would happen there you saw like how the whole like you know bullet like you know like he almost Jot jolin almost got shot like that thing that would be the uh, like you know thing that she was act he was actually warning her about not jotaro so that's why she was uh, he was saying that yeah you will probably you know get into more trouble so don't go there so now we don't know who that boy is he comes out in weird places you know he, he comes out of the dustbin <laughs> and then suddenly like you know goes away like i'm sure that's somehow related to his stand and he was also probably somehow able to know that someone uh, like, you know jotar is going to come and visit her and something bad is going to happen so <coughs> Who know maybe some kind of uh, pre-recognition power or clairvoyance something like that is his stand or maybe it's something completely different nobody knows i'm sure they'll tell us but yeah <clears throat> hopefully uh it, it does seem like he's an ally uh so yeah that's one thing and <clears throat> i don't even know why he's actually helping jolene like there must be some reason why he's helping her that's also another question but anyways um he gives her a bone which is he says that it's a charm it'll help her out so yeah let's i'm sure that will come in handy later on but okay and then we get in you know get in the visiting room 
Jolene thought it was his mom, her mom, but unfortunately it was not her mom. It was Jotaro. Now here the, here's the thing. I do wonder, does her mom even know that she is in trouble? Most probably she does. So if she does know that she's in trouble, why has she not come to visit her? Like it did seem she was very close to her mom. So why is she not here? Either she does not know that Jolene is in prison or I don't know why she has not come. So that's another thing. But okay, now we get in and here we actually get a little glimpse of her mom. Like you know she, she's She's a blonde girl. Uh, let me check. I was saying like if I don't think I've seen this girl before. So she this is like a completely new character. I'm talking about the mom. Yeah, like we've not met her anywhere before. So some random character, I guess. Okay. Um <clears throat> Yeah, so we kind of get a little flashback of when Jolene uh, was like, you know, uh, cap uh, like, you know, arrested before and Like, you know, like the mom was also there. Jolene was uh, In handcuffs. I have to say I really like Jolene's costume here. You know, the costume that she's wearing uh, That has a little butterfly and the tattoo in her, you know, face Her hairstyle is also kind, kind of nice Oh, the, her hairstyle is the same. <laughs> what am I even saying? <laughs> kind of the same. Yeah, it's, it's the same. Anyways, <laughs> I thought her hairstyle was different, but no. Um, okay, so... Yeah, so that was that. We get a little flashback and then we get to see why she hates her dad. Obviously because Jotaro didn't show up. Even, because, even if she was in trouble, she was in prison. Jotaro never showed up um i don't know why um <laughs> that's a question here maybe there's i i'm i'm thinking maybe there was some some kind of a misunderstanding you know like she basically heard the whole conversation from her mom's phone like, you know, like the mom was talking to jotaro and like from the way her mom was reacting to it she thought that oh dad doesn't like you know didn't come here because she didn't she wasn't even he wasn't even bothered to visit me or you know like all he was she's thinking something like that now it might be something completely different maybe maybe jotaro was really somehow involved with something important and he really did not had the time to come you know um now here's the thing i'm wondering if it was somehow related to uh, some kind of uh, like stand like you know some maybe something related to uh, these type of things these type of stand type of things you know like because we know Jotaro kind of goes here and there to investigate stuff he even went to um, uh, Moricho um, I think that was the name um, Josuke's uh, town you know like yeah I think that was the name Mori Moricho um, he, he even went there, you know, to investigate that whole situation. The whole thing with Jono also was something, uh, like Jotaro did not go there, it was Koichi who went there. But still, Jotaro was some, a little bit involved in that. So all these things he has been doing with even, like, you know, with his uh, marine biologist work that he does. So maybe he was somehow, um, you know, stuck in some kind of a, a mission like that. And that's why... I, like, you know, he wasn't able to properly explain the whole situation to his wife and her, his uh, daughter. And that's why, you know, like, and we already know Jotaro is quite awkward with a, quite a few things. He doesn't talk much. And that's why maybe, and he's a bit, <laughs> you know, a, a bit blunt with a few things. So maybe that's why, you know, he wasn't able to properly explain the situation. And both the wife and the daughter misunderstood the whole situation. And they were like, yeah, like... Uh, Jotaro hasn't doesn't have enough time to come visit uh, his his daughter even when she's in prison. Um, so probably something like that. You know, this is just my guess. You know, because I don't see any reason why she he would not come to visit her in her you know, problematic time. Because Jotaro does care for family. You know, like we we already saw in uh, part. Um, Three, yeah the whole thing with her with his mom then also you know the whole thing with 
uh, Josuke as well. He is kind of familiar, you know. So all that stuff. So yeah, Jota is not a person like that. So I don't know the reason why he did not come. Probably something like that. You know, maybe he was really involved in some kind of important stuff. But anyways, that's not the point here. The point here is that jo Jolene hates her dad. So, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, and like, you know, like we see here, like, you know, the whole situation. Uh, Jotaro explains the situation to Jolene and tells her about stands and other stuff about Dio, all these things. And he says that, um, yeah, you've got your stand. We need to get out. And Jolene is like, nope, I'm not getting out. No, I'm not going to listen to you. I'll do things in my own way. She tries to go away, gets shot almost. Uh, her stand helped her out. Stone free, helped her out. And so here's the thing. The guy who is attacking them, what was his name? His name is, it's kind of a interesting name quite a unique name okay yeah this is his name uh jongali a now this guy jongali a we kind of got a little glimpse of him so at the beginning i thought she he's an albino but no it's not probably he's he had cataract in his eyes mm. he's a sniper and i think like you know his stand power is probably something related to um eyesight or something that's why he can like you know properly see even though his eyes is, does not work it's also probably somehow related to the way he's doing stuff, you know, like uh, shooting from a completely different place and it's somehow coming and hitting Jolene. The little thing that's kind of hovering around, that's somehow related to it. So it's John Galie, he so he's uh, actually, he was a, a person related to Dio, Dio's minion or something. And now that Dio is gone, he's probably trying to get revenge or something as, as, as according to um, Jotaro, I think. Um, yeah, he does say that we've not met, although it has been 20 years. Jongalie uses his fanatism for this man, that is Dio, to exact his revenge. Yeah, it's basically, you know, because Dio died, he wants revenge or something. And that's why he is actually targeting Jolene. And uh, since Jolene is obviously from the Joestar family, I wonder why he's not targeting Jotaro. Maybe because he is too strong or something? Is that why? He's trying to pick off the uh, person who is a lot weaker than Jotaro? Who is Jolene, obviously, because she doesn't even know how to use her strength properly. He just, she just got it. Is that why? Maybe. But... Yeah, like, this guy's a problem. Now, another bad thing happens here. Um, the guy who, the, the, the police, he, he gets up, tries to hit uh, Jolene and somehow that triggers something into the stand. The stand shoots him and jo Jotaro gets shot through his hand. This guy gets shot in his like, you know, head. He's dead, I'm sure of it. Now the thing here that's actually concerning is that what are, like, what are they going to do now? This is a prison and a police officer is shot dead. There are two persons in this cell, who is Jotaro and Jolene. So obviously the fault will fall on both of them. How are they going to get out of the situation? Like, they're going to get into more trouble now. That's the thing that's actually concerning me. Because I'm sure Jotaro will somehow, Jotaro and Jolene will somehow be able to, uh, you know, um, somehow be able to defeat the stand or do something to it. But after that, what? Like, what do you do after that? That's the question. So... Yeah, hopefully we'll get to know. Hopefully, like, you know, like, I don't even know. Like, what do you even do in this situation? Like, you have a dead body in front of you. Like, we'll see. Um, okay, another thing I wanted to talk about here is, like, Jolene's uh, stand. The thing, the way she was explaining it, it's quite interesting to think about. She has both long range and short range power, that means. She can stretch her string. It will get weaker. Uh, but still, it, it, it has enough strength to cut off a human's ear, you know, and, and strangle someone to death. So, not death, but strangle someone. And it has strength like that. So, she can use it in long range. And when she uses it in short range, she has like this, like, you know, this humanoid stand and it can fight very well. So, 
wow so she's like an uh, you know, all-rounder she can fight in long range short range anything you know like usually stand which are short range stands aren't able to fight long range and vice versa uh so yeah that's that's a great advantage he has so yeah that was it that was my reaction to episode number three yeah episode number three of uh, jojo's bizarre adventure stone ocean so if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to press the like button subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed i'll be putting out um my reactions uh, every week three episode and um the next episode that i'm going to put out i'm not sure when i'll put it out probably within one or two days so be sure to subscribe if you want like, you know you'll get notified then and comment down below anything you want to say your you know how you're liking this and everything i'm loving this it's so interesting and you know i'm, I'm really looking forward to how he, she's going to use her stand and how this is going to go now this is, there's one thing that i'm kind of thinking about is i know this has 12 episodes is this going to have a second part I hope so because I doubt any Jojo can be like you know Jojo story can be completed within 12 episodes I doubt that so I I'm 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 I think maybe we'll have like a season two or something in the future uh, like related to part six so that's something that I'm thinking I don't know I'm, I'm sure like everyone has their answers now because you know like the, the 12 episodes have already come out and I'm sure there is some kind of announcement in the end or something maybe so but since i've not watched it you know i'm kind of watching it now i don't know so i'm sure it it must have a sec second part otherwise it it wouldn't make sense that you know like this is already the third episode and how jojo episodes kind of go it kind of like you know takes one or two episodes to complete a whole thing for example this episode this episode we are kind of seeing the beginning of it the next episode is going to continue the the thing that is happening here so just like this i'm sure there will be more episodes like this so it will take a little bit of time so I doubt this will be over in 12 episodes. There must be more. So I'm, I'm guessing we'll have a future season uh, for this. But anyways, that's something for the future. So yeah, so yeah, that's it guys. So thank you guys for watching. So I'll see you guys um, in a few days um, when I put out the next episode, uh, episode number four of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, Stone Ocean. Until then, goodbye and have a nice day.